Hi, I'm Timo Harbo, and I run the course Python for Structural Engineers. In this video, we'll create a tool for ETABs. We'll create a tool that can take all your pile reactions and create a nice looking plot for every single load combination and output these images to a folder. So let's see how we can do that with some basic Python knowledge and a bit of AI. The first thing we need to do is to extract the information we need from our ETAPS model. And while you can do this through the ETAPS API, we're just going to keep things simple and we're going to export the data we need as Excel tables. So let's do that. So now the two tables we want to export is the table joint reactions and we're going to export point object connectivity. And we are only interested in exporting load combinations, so let's get rid of the load cases. So now we are ready to export. So you can see we have now exported this table here with all our joint reactions. This here is the variable we're interested in plotting. And over here, we have the X and Y coordinates of each node. So let's save this file here. We call the file reactions and we save it in this ETAPS reactions folder. So now before we write any code for this, let's see how far we can get just using AI. I use ChatGPT4, but when you're watching this video, it may be another large language model that you prefer to use. So let's upload the file. So what we want ChatGPT to do for us here is to create the foundation for our template. I know that we'll be using pandas for Python for this. I also know that we end up with a Jupyter notebook in the end. So let's tell ChatGPT as much as we can about our data. And that way we should get a pretty good first shot. So let's start writing a prompt. So now I've written a prompt here and I've tried to be as explicit as possible. So I tell ChatGPT that this file contains two spreadsheets, one with reactions and one with node connectivity. I want to make a plot for each unique load combination in the reaction sheet. And then I give ChatGPT a recommendation here because I know that in our data sheet, we have a max and min value for each output case here. So I want to make a plot for this load combination combined and for this one here. So that's why I suggest that it makes a new column where you combine the combination and step number and then loop over the unique values of this column. And to be a little bit more explicit, I probably shouldn't call it combination, but output case. Output case. Each unique output case. Then I say that on each plot, I want the following. I need you to map each unique name in the reaction sheet with the XY coordinates in the connectivity sheet. Then make a scatter point at the XY locations and let the color of the scatter point be defined by the fset value in the reaction sheet. Use pandas, run the code, check that it works. Let's try it. So you can see now, ChatGPT has managed to write us a tool that seems to be working fairly okay. So now what I want is to get this code out so I can continue modifying it myself. So I say export this tool as a Jupyter Notebook. So now I've downloaded the file that ChatGPT created and I can see that it failed in actually turning it into a Jupyter Notebook. It simply just gave it the file ending as if it was a Jupyter Notebook, but kept the code as it was. But that's okay, let's just quickly copy this into a notebook. So now we've copied it in. Let's just split this notebook here into four parts. Then we start by running the first cell. Then we run the next cell and we can see here we get an error because we need to put in the right path to the file. So we change the file path and we turn it into a raw string and we can see that we have now loaded the data frame. Now let's also split this one down here and see if we can load in the data frames. So we take the joint reaction sheet, convert it to a data frame, the point object connectivity and turn that into a data frame. 
it looks like it works. Let's see, we have the reactions here, and here we have the connectivity. So that looks about right. Then I can see down here that ChatGPT has also helped us clean up the data frame for us. So you can see the next part of the script here is a bit of cleaning up. We're deleting the rows we don't need with these two drop statements here. We are converting numbers to numbers in both the reactions and the connectivity. And then in the end here, we are merging the two data frames. So we take the X and Y coordinates from the one sheet and put them in to the other sheet. We run that. So I just noticed in the code we got from ChatGPT that there were some errors. The code simply would not run. So I went back to ChatGPT and I said, hey, this doesn't work. I get an error. I get this code back. That also didn't work. I said, what code did you use that worked? And then I ended up getting this code out here that works. So this kind of shows that we asked ChatGPT to give us something. It gave us something else and it didn't work. But now I believe we have something that's a pretty good basis for this script here. So we are doing like before. We get the Excel file here. We load the reactions sheet and the connectivity sheet. Then we do a little bit of cleaning up here. We convert numbers to actual numbers. We create a unique column for each case. Then we merge the two sheets. So we get the X and Y coordinates from the connectivity sheet into the reaction sheet. And then we can essentially loop over all our load combinations and plot them. Now I'm just plotting a single one here, you can see, um, but we can just do like this here. And we start getting all these plots out here. The next thing we wanna do is to export all of these plots here to a folder. So let's try that. So we're gonna go back into ChatGPT. Say, I have this code. I would like to output these to a folder. So now we have this code here. Let's try to copy it in. Take that instead of this. And let's put a path to where we want to save this. And we run this. And now we can go into this folder here. And I have a nice figure for every single load combination. Maybe as the last thing that would be worth doing, we could add a little annotation above each scatter point that shows the actual value. So let's try to get that in. So now we've asked ChatGPT to add an annotation above each node. And I think it's just this little piece of code here. We can copy that in. And let's try to run it again. So now you can see out here, all our figures are being updated and let's try to open one of them. And we can see we get the values out here. The very last thing we wanna do is of course to confirm that these numbers here are correct. So let's go back into ETAPS. And now I've just taken a random load combination, UDCon is 10, and let's find the same one in here. And let's see if we get the same results. So if we just do a few spot checks here, you can see over here it's a little bit small, but it says 1914, 1914. Let's see if we can find the big one here, 2489. 2,489. Of course, you would need to do a little bit more checking to make sure that your results are right. You also want to adjust your diagram here a little bit to maybe look a little bit nicer, but I think you have the basis for a really nice template here and you basically haven't done much work yet. So the next step here is of course to turn this template into a nice template that also your colleagues want to use. You want to make these diagrams nicer. Maybe you want to output a summary file. There could be a lot more things you would want to do, but I hope that I, with this video, have managed to show how you can use ChatGPT and other large language models together with Python to create some really, really cool FEA post-processing tools really, really fast. 
Thanks a lot for watching. And if you're a structural engineer and you're interested in learning how to use Python, I recommend that you sign up for my course, Python for Structural Engineers, where I'll teach you how you can apply these things in your daily work. So thanks a lot for watching.